Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship today. So whether you are a Mount Zion member, you've been to visit with us before, or you're a new visitor, on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Selena Johnson, and the entire Mount Zion congregation, Mount Zion family, we would like to welcome you. This is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad that you are here. We are so glad for this partly sunny morning, but we are glad to be here. So thank you so much for finding it not robbery to wake up a little bit early and to be with us and to spend a little time with the Lord this morning. So we would like to, to thank you. Um, please remember that this service is being recorded. Um, if you came in um, a little bit before nine, you heard the music of our guest musician, Ronald Walton. You'll hear a little bit uh, more from him in a few minutes um, and from the choir this week. Um, we also would like to thank our drummer because you also heard um, Angel Bathia. Uh, but Ronald is, um, we call him Trey, it's, he prefers to be called um, it's a graduate of Duke Ellington, very talented, as you will hear. Um, he also uh, attends um, the University of the District of Columbia. So uh, we welcome Ronald Trey Walton today um, on recording, and um, soon we hope that he'll be able to be a guest musician um, in person. So again, if you would um, just center yourselves and welcome, welcome, welcome to Mount Zion. Uh, let us center our hearts for our opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for another day. We ask for your continued protection and safety around us. We cannot figure out the solutions to what is going on our, in our world, to the pandemic of racial injustice and the pandemic of the coronavirus. So we are looking to you, Lord, for a balm in Gilead. We thank you for health and strength, for food and shelter. And we pray for our shelter challenge, brothers and sisters, especially as the weather changes. We are thanking you in advance for guiding all of your people to the polls in just a few weeks and encouraging everyone to vote. And we are praying for a fair and just election. But in the midst of the storm, Lord, we seek the joy that only you can provide. So help us to find that joy, just a little joy in each and every day, especially during these troubling times. We thank you for that old ship of Zion, Mount Zion, who is still standing and still serving for over 203 years, again, surviving many more challenges and in addition to this pandemic. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We love you, Lord. We ask you into this service. Amen. 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 So we'll have our, our first song meditation.
Wow. Wow. Just clap your hands on that one. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Praise God for that praise anthem, giving God glory right there. Thank you, Brother Ronald. Okay. So uh, now it's time we're going to celebrate our uh, September birthdays. Anybody have a birthday in September? You got to unmute yourself and say, this is when my, you tell us your name, when your birthday is or was in September. And you could tell us your age, but you don't have to. <laughs> All right. Anybody September birthdays? Good morning, Mount Zion. I am Wendy Featherson. I will celebrate my birthday on September 17th. Yeah, that's enough. That's good. That's good. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Good Wendy. morning, everyone. It's Sherelle. And on September 5th, I turned 39 years old. Wow. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. This is Alice. And um, on September the 30th, I'll turn 70 years old. Ooh, wow. <laughs> awesome. A milestone one. <laughs> Ooh, September babies. <laughs> Any other September babies out there? Um, I don't think Camaro jumped on. So on today, Camaro, and I will not say her age because she did not give me permission. But today, Camaro is Camaro's birthday on September 13th. Camaro Jones. Oh, happy birthday to Camaro. Yes. Any, any other September babies? Let's check our calendar here. Hold on. Yeah, we have Wendy. Oh, Audrey Law's birthday will be on the, oh no, that should be on there. Okay. We'll celebrate her heavenly birthday on that day. Um, Ilanita Prince on the 24th. Damon Davis on the 27th. And, oh, we already said Alice. Okay, awesome. Anybody celebrating anniversaries besides me and my husband? <laughs> we'll be celebrating our 17th wedding anniversary on September 20th. Right. September 20th. Anybody else celebrating a wedding anniversary this month? Any others? All right. Well, September was a beautiful month to get married. So <laughs> uh, we were happy and we're, we're thankful to be celebrating all these years. Happy birthday to all of those of you who had birthdays and have birthdays coming up this month. Amen. Thank you. I would also like for us to celebrate grandparents because today is actually National Grandparents Day. So if you are a grandparent out there and you can unmute yourself, just tell us your name and how many grands you have. You don't have to name them all. Just, you know, just tell us. <laughs> Patrice and Eddie. <laughs> Hi, Patrice. Hi, just me and Eddie. <laughs> one grandbaby, the one she, she that's the, her pride and joy. <laughs> Amen. Any other grandparents out there want to give a shout out? Dolores, I have one grandson named Zayden. Okay, happy Grandparents Day. Anybody else? Well, Ann Underwood is a grandparent, and I was trying to count the grandchildren. I, I think, I think they're five. Five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Congratulations to her. This is Janet Ricks, and I have three grandsons. Deontay Morrison is a grown man. He's an adult living in New York. And two here in Silver Spring, both um, Aaron and Christian. Hello. Okay. Awesome. Hello, this is this is uh, Vicki Bailey. I have two grandchildren. You got two grandbabies? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not babies, but they're not babies, babies no more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations to you. Do you have any great grands? Anybody have great grands out there? Did you say great grands? Yeah, anybody have great grands? 
Anne has great grands, but I can't count those. And then she also has great great, I think. Wow. So Anne has great grands <laughs> and great great grands. <laughs> Congratulations to her. And I, and I steal all of them from her. <laughs> and you, yes, and you share, you share in those. Amen. And I know Bernice has, uh, she has grands and great grands too. I'm not sure if she has great greats. Uh, I know sometimes it's hard for people on the phone to unmute themselves. So, um, Vicki also has, Vicki, of course, has, um, has yeah. her grandchildren and, and um, please for, for me. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So what I want to do, celebrate you. We thank God for you. Um, and I know your families also thank God for you. So happy Grandparents Day. Uh, grandparent is a little bit parent, a little bit teacher, and a little bit best friend. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for um, the generations. The generations, the progeny, the, the love that comes from having children and grandchildren. We've just been so blessed, Lord. Uh, the people of Mount Zion have been blessed with grands and with children and grandchildren and great grandchildren and even great greats in some cases. And so um, you, oh God, are the creator of all life. And so we know it comes from you. We thank you and praise you, oh God, on today. And we pray that they would have a wonderful, beautiful celebration today and that their families would just honor them on this day as we honor you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to turn it over to our scripture reader for this morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yep. Good morning, Mount Zion. This morning I will be reading from Eugene Peterson's Message Bible. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. During this time, as the disciples were increasing in by numbers, by leaps and bounds, hard feelings developed among the Greek-speaking believers, Hellenists. Today, or towards the Hebrew-speaking believers, because their widows were being discriminated against in the daily food line. So the 12 called a meeting of the disciples. They said, it wouldn't be right for us to abandon our, late, our responsibilities for preaching and teaching the word of God to help with the care of the poor. So friends, choose seven men from among you whom everyone trusts men full of the Holy Spirit and good sense, and will assign them this task. Meanwhile, we'll stick to our assigned tasks of prayer and speaking God's word. The congregation through, thought this was a great idea. This went ahead, they went ahead and chose Stephen, Philip, Prochus, Necnor, Timon, Perimenus, and Nicholas. Then they presented them to the apostles, praying the apostles laid on hands and commissioned them for the task. The word of God prospered. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased dramatically. Note, release, a great many priests submitted themselves to the faith. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will have a selection, a musical selection um, at this time, a song meditation from the choir. And between being there with Ronald and being back, um, 
there was just so much joy yesterday. So we ask that you would meditate on this next song. Following that will be our message for the morning brought by our own Pastor Selena Johnson, The Power of Perseverance. just can't praise God enough for all that he has done. Hallelujah and amen. Well, church, if you have been endowed with exceptional wisdom and exceptional faith, then when times of strife come, you're able to draw from that wellspring and have the power to persevere. Amen. And so, a matter of internal strife came up with the early Christian church there, as we heard in the scriptures, um, a matter of discrimination, in fact. And so in verses three to five of our text in Acts chapter six, um, it tells us how the apostles dealt with, uh, with, with the strife. And I love how the Common English Bible puts it, so I'm going to read those verses for you again in a different translation. It's good to always have a lot of different translations. It gives you a deeper, richer understanding in your scriptures. But the way the Common English Bible puts it is like this. It says, brothers and sisters, carefully choose seven well-respected men from among you. They must be well-respected and endowed, somebody say endowed, by the spirit with exceptional wisdom. We will put them in charge of this concern. As for us, we will devote ourselves to prayer and the service of proclaiming the word this proposal pleased the entire community. They selected Stephen, a man endowed, somebody say endowed, a man endowed with the Holy Spirit and with exceptional faith. And then it goes on to name all those names from uh, the apostles that they chose for the team. And so again, this morning's message is entitled, The Power of Perseverance. It's the second sermon in our Act Like an Apostle series 
um, what is an apostle? Apostle is just somebody who is sent. And so I want you to have the power to persevere as you are sent forth to witness for Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you are our soul's wellspring. You give us the strength, the power to persevere. And so we thank you that you just put a tiny drop, God, of your spirit in each of us and sealed it with the promise. And so we pray, oh God, as we listen to these words that we would be reassured that we would be powered up to do your will, your work, your way. It's in Christ's precious name that we pray, amen. So a lot of times when you hear that word endowment, we think of financial things. And uh, the, the, the dictionary definition for endowment is an income or a form of property given or bequeathed to someone. Um, furthermore, a financial endowment, if you look that up, a financial endowment is a legal structure for managing, in many cases, indefinitely perpetuating a, a pool of financial, real estate, or other investments for a specific purpose, according to the will of its founders and donors. And so, uh, like, for example, when Michael Bloomberg gave that big endowment to Johns Hopkins, he gave $1.8 million to Johns Hopkins, $1.8 billion, I'm sorry, dollars to Johns Hopkins as an endowment because uh, he, he wanted to keep them going uh, to perpetuate something, right? But he also what had, had an agenda in mind. He wanted to keep them going and to be able to have needs blind admission as well. And so um, people give towards endowments of institutions because they want to perpetuate the life of the institution, but they also, uh, you know, they want, it, they want the life of the institution to, to persevere. They want to keep it going, but they also want certain things to get done, right? In other words, they have an agenda. So God has gifted us, friends. God has gifted us with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like an endowment for us. It's like a wellspring for us because God has gifted it to us. And God expects certain things to come from it. Number one, I'm sure that God wants the body of Christ to endure forever. In fact, the scriptures do say that about Jesus, his kingdom, there will be no end to it. Amen of his kingdom, there is no end. And so uh, perpetuity, right? And God wants certain things to get done in the church as well. God wants inequities to be handled fairly. God wants injustice to be dealt with. God wants internal strife to be squashed so that the witness can go forth boldly and more disciples for Christ can be made, amen? So there's a purpose, there's a purpose for this endowment that we have from the Holy Spirit. Now, the book of Acts is sometimes named the gospel of the Holy Spirit, like a nickname. Um, it's an action-packed book. If you've ever read through, run through Acts or read through Acts, you know what I'm talking about. So in our text today, in verse one, it says, about that time. What time? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a lot of amazing things had happened up until this time. So the apostles had encountered the resurrected Christ. He appeared to them. He promised them the Holy Spirit and then he ascended into heaven, right? And then the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit did indeed descend upon them with you know, violent winds and uh, tongues of fire, uh, people speaking languages and understanding languages they did not even know. Um, Peter got up and preached boldly and thousands and thousands of people came to the faith, right? And then they uh, began to live together. They shared everything in common. They, were, they, they had a, a commune, really. Um, then after that, uh, Peter and John went up to the beautiful gate and a lame man was healed. And people were rejoicing and more people come to the faith. The leaders got jealous. They put uh, Peter and John in jail. But then God did a miraculous jailbreak for them and they got out. And then there was more healings, more converts, more growth. Everything was going great. And then suddenly, boom, they hit a speed bump. Well, what happened? Internal strife happened, church. Discrimination within the commune happened. And because of it, the progress that they had made could have come to a screeching halt. 
Because how many of you know that internal strife in any group will tear the group apart? You know, you can deal with external strife. It kind of like, you know, the external enemy can even help you unite within. But a house divided against itself cannot stand, right? That internal strife. So they had survived an external strife. You know, there were persecutions, there were imprisonments, but this internal uh, conflict needed to be squashed right away or the whole thing could have fallen apart. So what happened? Let me just tell you what happened uh, in some of the details. Well, so the Greek speaking disciples accused the Aramaic speaking or the Hebrew speaking disciples of not giving their widows the fair share of the meals, the, the communal food, right? And so just to give you uh, some background, this wasn't like, this wasn't just a, a cultural difference between two cultures that were different but equal. No, 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 because the Greek speaking Jews were foreigners, right? These were immigrants. They were from the diaspora of Jews, the people who had been scattered all throughout different parts of the world because of things that had happened in the past in Israel's history. So these were people from foreign lands and um, they were coming back as, as like immigrants. And so, but now the Aramaic speaking Jews or the, the, the Hebrew speaking Jews, these were the ones who had been living right there in Jerusalem, in Judea right there where the, you know, the holy temple was, right? And they probably spoke, uh, you know, those languages, the, lang the Hebrew language is the language of the holy scriptures. And so maybe they felt like, you know, maybe they had a little bit of a, a superior attitude about them, right? A superiority complex toward the Greek speaking Jews, right? Maybe the Aramaic speaking Jews might've been like, you know what, this is Jerusalem, speak Aramaic. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So even though they were all now supposed to be one in Christ, they were one in Christ, one body living all together as brothers and sisters, there was still this cultural discrimination going on there. Now, understand this also, um, widows were some of the uh, most vulnerable people in the population, right? Widows and orphans. And so the immigrant Jews were saying that the most disadvantaged and helpless among us, the poorest among us are not having their needs met even though this group has made it their motto, has made it their standard, has made it their witness for Jesus Christ to be a place where everybody's needs are met. This commitment was, was part of what was attracting so many people to this new faith movement. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone is treated equally here. Turn your life over to Christ and you'll be accepted into the family as a brother, as a sister, as an equal, right? And so this accusation of discrimination and unfair treatment was very serious. Uh, it, it cut to the core of who they claimed to be as disciples of Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus had commanded the disciples said, love one another. I command you to love one another. In fact, this is how people are going to know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another, amen? That's right there in John 13. And so the 12 disciples had quite a dilemma on their hands here. But then, oh, hallelujah, but then, in an act of exceptional wisdom, the 12 apostles took action. What was their exceptionally wise choice? Well, first, they chose to continue what God had called them to do. They chose to continue in the work that they were gifted in, the preaching, the praying, the evangelizing, the teaching, because that was growing the disciples as well. That was growing the movement as well and growing their faith. Secondly, they chose to delegate to others the work of handling this very serious and delicate issue. They didn't try to ignore it. They didn't try to deny it. They didn't try to sweep it under the rug, right? They put a special task force together to deal with it. And they needed exceptional people to be on this task force. They needed people endowed with exceptional faith. And so in verse five, it says the proposal pleased the entire community. They selected St Stephen. Stephen, a man and endowed by the Holy Spirit with exceptional faith. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. And so they didn't pick the Aramaic speaking people, right? They picked others to be on this team. And so the 12, the 12 apostles, they were exceptionally endowed 
with wisdom. And the apostles they appointed to this committee were exceptionally endowed with faith. Amen. Where did it come from? It all comes from the Holy Spirit, of course. The Holy Spirit had endowed them uh, with this, had endowed them with this wellspring of wisdom, of faith, so that they could persevere even when they hit these moments of strife. Friends, if God's Spirit is living in you, you have that power as well. You are uh, an heir to that endowment as well. Wisdom will come to you that you did not know where, where it came from. Skills will come easily to you that you did not know, you, you did not know where they came from. You know it didn't come from your own might or power. Opportunities will come to you. I know I can get a witness in here. Opportunities will come to you and doors will open that you had no idea how it happened. You know just the favor of God, right? Glory to God. Just think about what God has done for you this far. Doesn't your soul look back and wonder? Sometimes my soul look back and wonder, how did I get over? How did I get here? It was because God had an endowment for me. It's because God had an endowment for you, an investment in you, a wellspring of faith and wisdom reserved for you. Amen. At the Bible study this past Thursday, we were recalling all the amazing things that God had done in our lives, unexpected things, life-changing things. Oh, church, our God is one who makes the rough places smooth, who makes the crooked path straight. Amen. And the early church had hit this rough patch right there. It wasn't going to be their first. It wasn't going to be their last one either. It was the first one they hit. But they learned that God had that endowment for them, that exceptional wisdom, that exceptional faith for them. And watch this now. I don't want you to miss this. If you read on in the scriptures and you go on to verse seven, as a result of that perseverance of, of dealing with that thing, what happened? The church grew. Verse seven says, God's word continued to grow. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased significantly. Even, even a large group of priests embraced the faith. Imagine that. Even the Jewish priests, who were some of the staunchest opponents to Jesus' ministry when he was alive, who gave him the most, you know what, when he was alive, even they were starting to embrace the faith. What a miracle. That's what persevering in the spirit will do. Unexpected and unimaginable things for us. Those widows, they had to persevere. They were strangers in a strange land. They were destitute, and yet they had to persevere in insisting on justice until their cries were heard, until their complaints were addressed. Those 12 apostles, the, the original, the, the OG 12, they had to persevere as well. They had to stay focused on their gifts. They had to keep the main thing, the main thing, so that they could preach and teach and pray. The meals team that was formed, they had to persevere. They had to learn a, get, you know, learn a new skill set, how to deliver these meals fairly and how to make sure everybody was fed. They had to persevere. We, church, we have to persevere. I know things look bleak right now. We're tired of this pandemic. We're tired of these pandemics. But by God's mighty spirit, we have the power to persevere. We can't let these uh, speed bumps unhinge us and just uh, tear us all apart. We have to draw on the wellspring of wisdom and be prepared, right? Be prepared this winter, y'all. Be prepared. You know, I used to think, I used to think people that had bunkers in the in their basements and whatnot, I used to think they were crazy. Not anymore. <laughs> Store up some food, y'all. Have some wisdom. Prepare for this election. Be prepared. Have a plan. Am I going to vote early? Am I going to mail it in? Am I going to go on that day and be prepared to sit out uh, uh, and wait in the lines and have my PPE, be prepared. Wisdom is telling us to be prepared, right? And yet faith is telling us that whatever happens, God is still in control. After we've done all we can, we just stand. No matter the outcomes, God is still in control. So don't give up. Just persevere. Just draw on the endowment that God has for us, the rich endowment of faith, of wisdom, of favor, of all those things we can pull from it, the wellspring that will never, ever run dry. Amen? The God power, the Holy Spirit power. Amen? Church is called to do in times of racial reckoning in America. So please be sure to uh, schedule some time to stay after church for that one so that we can discuss together with our um, neighbors there in Georgetown about 
what the church can do in these times of racial pandemic. Okay, um, the Georgetown Ministry Center is also having a virtual fundraiser. Please check out their website. Georgetown Ministry Center supports the um, Shelter Challenge community in Georgetown. And every year they have a big fundraiser. That's their big uh, money. That's, that's how they get most of their mon money. But this year they have to do it virtually. So please go to their website and check it out and help them. The We Rise um, initiative from the Baltimore Washington Conference is now going on. This is also to uh, help us all become anti-racist churches. And so our ne the next meeting is on uh, the first Tuesday in October, October 6th. So check that out on the, the conference website and uh, be sure to join in on that. This, the, the, the energy is gathering on that as well. Our church conference, our yearly uh, church conference that we have with our district superintendent is gonna be happening on October 24th, Saturday the 24th at one o'clock p.m. Those are just some of the announcements. Hopefully you got the email with the, the whole slew of things on there, but please be sure to read that carefully and just be prayerful about where you can jump in and participate, amen. Let's look now to the Lord for benediction. And then afterwards, we're gonna go into breakout rooms so you can say hello to each other and check in. Let's look to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, go forth wisely this week. Go forth faithfully this week, endowed with the exceptional faith and wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, I'm gonna unmute everybody. And then the breakout rooms are kind of random. Just stop in and say hello. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 